Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is a used book haul. So, I think it was about a week ago, um, our local library had a book sale. Um, I think it's the last book sale probably of the year that I'll be going to. Um, I've hauled a lot of used books over the past uh, month or so. I'm going to try and calm down and uh, catch up with my reading. But um, I did find some books that I thought, you know, I'm kind of excited about. So uh, I'll share these with you. Um, I've just got six here. I don't plan on taking too much time. I haven't read any of these. I haven't done deep research into all of them. There's things that look interesting, and I share them with you. If you have insight to offer, I would just love to hear it. Um, okay, so the first one is, is here, The Revenant. Um, it's a word that I obviously like quite a bit. Uh, now, what who has returned as if from the dead by Michael, is it Punky? I'm not sure exactly how to say his name. Um, I have seen the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio um, film that this, uh, you know, that was adapted from this. So it's about uh, Hugh Glass in the 1820s, um, who is mauled by a bear, left for dead, but he doesn't die, and he comes back with a vengeance. And uh, I remember liking the movie, uh, I think it was quite fun, and I thought it would be worth reading the book as well. Um, so yeah, uh, next year, I mentioned this before, I, I do want to try and be more explicit about reading um, historical fiction. So this is definitely one of those contenders and one that I've had my eye on. So I was really happy to find this. And I should say that, you know, all these books were either like a dollar or two dollars. Um, that's it. I think that the paperbacks were pretty much all a dollar and um, the hard covers were like two dollars and there's one big soft cover that was two dollars. So uh, we're, we're talking about like ten dollars for all these books. Um, but first one, The Revenant. <clears throat> Second book, Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. I have not read Neil Gaiman yet, and I know that some people absolutely adore him. Um, <clears throat> this is one that has kind of always caught my eye. I always like the, the cover design. Um, you know, I am a horror fan. I love things that are kind of darker and macabre. Uh, and this seemed like a, an interesting story, interesting book. It's got some illustrations in here as well. Um, this is definitely, I figured, I can give this a shot. Um, as far as I understand, like, this is kind of a, I don't know if it's young adult or if it's younger than that. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, age is. But um, this is maybe something I'll read for uh, middle grade March. Um, but, yeah, and I do want to read this, and I want to read his Norse mythology uh, to see how he interprets those things. Because I've heard that's also really entertaining as well. So, who knows, maybe this will be my first foray into Neil Gaiman. Um, I have been on the lookout for this book at used book sales for a long time, and I was finally able to find it, which I was happy about. <clears throat> this one I already own, but when I saw it sitting there for $2, I couldn't resist getting it, especially with how good a condition it is. That's this thing. I mean, the sagas of the Icelanders. I love this cover. You see the, and the, the light? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is you know, perfectly new copy, basically. Um, and like I said, I already have this in my library, and I've already read some of these things in here. But, uh, you know, as just a kind of an extra reading copy, or maybe something I could bring into the classroom, uh, I, just, I just couldn't pass this up. Um, so, yeah, I thought this was an awesome find for two bucks. Oh, I'm sorry, if you don't know, uh, <laughs> these sagas are um, sagas of the, um, usually the 12th, 13th century, uh, mostly about the, what we call the Viking Age era, um, an era that would already pass by the time they were written down. But these often give us very valuable insight, even if it's in a slightly fictionalized way, of what, um, you know, the, the Viking Age was like um, in Iceland, but also in other parts of Europe as well, quite often with these stories. Uh, they're fun. A lot of them are like these kind of proto-novels, um, and they can be very entertaining, so... Never read one, I recommend it. <clears throat> and here's another one that I'd have my eye on. I found just a really good copy here. The Lost City of Z, A Tale of Obsession in the Amazon by David Graham. Now, 
This, I'm just looking at the back here again. Yeah, so in 1925, the legendary British explorer Percy Fawcett ventured into the Amazon jungle in search of a fabled civilization located deep in the deadly wilderness. He never returned. In this, masterful master, this masterpiece of narrative nonfiction, journalist David Gran tells the epic story of Fawcett's quest for his lost city of Z as he unravels the greatest exploration mystery of the 20th century. So this seems like, you know, part history, part journalistic investigation. Maybe it's part travel. I'm not sure exactly. Um, but uh, I had seen some other people, um, I don't know if they finished it yet, but I saw some other people get this book and be quite excited about it. Uh, so I couldn't pass it up when I saw it. And like I said, it's in good condition. And yeah, so if you read this, yeah, tell me what you think. All right, two more. This is one I was happy to find. Once again, in pretty good condition. Uh, the Guns of August by Barbara Tuckman. Um, the Outbreak of World War One. Where are the Pulitzer Prize? Um, I have not read any of her books yet. Um, I've still been on the lookout at these used bookstores for a nice copy of A Distant Mirror. Her book about, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's about like 14th century France. I have sometimes found copies there in these book sales and they are in horrible condition all the time. They're, they're barely holding on to the binding. Um, and I've always passed them over. Uh, so I'm still looking for a nice copy of that um, at a decent price. But this is one that I've heard really good things about. I know it's kind of a classic in its, um, in that genre. Uh, so um, I have a couple other World War One books that are on the shelves. Uh, maybe I'll get to them finally, at least some of them uh, in quarter four of Historathon this year. Um, but yeah, really, really glad to find this. <clears throat> and then the last one here. So I didn't know a lot about this, uh, but it definitely caught my eye. So H is for Hawk um, by Helen McDonald. You see all these prizes that it won. Um, I had seen really good reviews for it. I don't know a lot about this, though. Um, it seems like it's part nature writing, part memoir of grief. Um, you can, If you've read this, you can let me know if I have the right idea there. Uh, so... I'm guessing it's a very personal story, but it also, I think, has to do with, like, falconry. I don't exactly know how those things relate yet. Um, <laughs> but uh, like I said, I'd seen, I remember seeing really good reviews for it. It caught my eye. I have been um, on the lookout for things that are more like um, nature writing, uh, I guess, you know, in, in nature. Um, and I thought this might be another addition to that. Uh, so, yeah, figured, I figured I'd give it a shot if people say it's worth reading. So the, those are the books that I picked up. I said maybe it was like $10 for all these. Um, not bad at all, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So we've got H is for Hawk, The Guns of August, The Sagas of the Icelanders, The Revenant, The Graveyard Book, and The Lost City of the Z. Again, if you read these, love to hear your thoughts. And as always, thank you, BookTube.